brutal barracuda, a sniper elite channel. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my continuing mission to get as many people as possible to turn off that aim assist, today we'll be looking at part 2 of how to improve your aim, this time looking at gravity and bullet drop. Before we begin, it would be a good idea to check out my part 1 video, which is all about the wind. I'll put a link on screen now and in the description. In it, I talk about the importance of muzzle velocity and how different muzzle velocities affect your bullet differently. So if you don't quite understand how muzzle velocity works, it's very important you go and check out that video first as I explain everything there is to know about muzzle velocity. One more thing before we get onto the gravity itself. Zeroing or adjusting your scope. Basically what this means is if you zero or adjust your scope to 100 meters and aim directly at a 100 meter target, you will not need to compensate for any bullet drop. Same thing if you adjust your scope to 200 meters and aim directly at a 200 meter target, and the same for 300 meters and so on. So basically, if your target is 100 and something meters away, adjust your scope to 100 meters. If your target is 200 and something meters away, then adjust your scope to 200 meters. Adjusting your scope correctly will reduce the amount of bullet drop that you will need to compensate for, thus making your shot much easier. Now that's out of the way, we can get onto the gravity and bullet drop which is a much easier topic than the wind, so let's just dive right in. If you are having trouble working out how much gravity affects your bullet without the aim assist, then here's what to do. First, be sure to select the T-Post tactical reticle in your gear loadout. This is, in my opinion, by far the best one. Personally, I've always just used the default one, but whilst trying to put together this tutorial, I have discovered that this reticle is the one you want. And for the rest of this video, and most likely for the rest of my days, I'll be using this one. Next, decide which rifle you want to work out the bullet drop compensation for. Remember, all rifles have a different muzzle velocity, therefore the amount of compensation required will vary from rifle to rifle. In this video, I will be using the Springfield rifle. If you've watched part 1 of my improving your aim video, you would already understand why. If not, stop this video and go watch that first. Next, download this sheet that I put together to help with judging the bullet drop. I will leave a link to it in the description below or just get a pen and paper and make your own copy of the T-Post Tactical Reticle. Next, start Mission 1 on Marksman Difficulty and make sure your aim assist is switched on. Head over to this chap, stand at a range of 25 meters, make sure your scope adjustment is set to zero and whilst holding your breath, aim directly at his head. Here, the aim assist will show you exactly how much bullet drop will occur for a distance of 25 meters. Mark where the bullet will go on your sheet in box 1, so in this case about a quarter of the way down between the first two horizontal lines. Next, do the same thing with 50 meters, 75 meters, and 100 meters, and mark those on your sheet in the same box. This now shows you how much compensation for bullet drop, or how much higher above your target, you must aim at a range of 0 to 100 meters with the Springfield rifle. Next, increase your scope adjustment to 100 meters and do exactly the same thing for ranges 100 to 200 meters and mark where the bullet will go on reticle 2. Next, increase your scope adjustment to 200 meters and do exactly the same thing for ranges 200 to 300 meters and mark where the bullets will land on reticle 3. Then finally, do the same thing for 300 to 400 meters and mark it on reticle 4. Now we have all compensation requirements for bullet drop using the Springfield rifle up to 400 meters. Now what we can see if we look at all of these results is with the exception of the 0 to 100 meter range all the results when the scope is adjusted correctly are pretty much identical. So if we look at the bullet drop for 125 meters when zeroed at 100 
225 meters when zeroed at 200 and 325 meters when zeroed at 300 we can see that for the 25 meters over the scope adjustment the bullet drop is the same for all of them so we now know whenever we are shooting a target be it 125 225 or 325 meters away it doesn't matter as long as our scope is zeroed correctly your bullet will always drop this much so now we can turn off the aim assist Simply line up the enemy's head directly in the middle between the center and the first horizontal line, and... Next, if we take a look at the shots that are 50 meters above the scope adjustment, we can see the same thing. With the exception of the 150 meter shot which is ever so slightly different, all shots at 50 meters over the scope adjustment you must aim bang on the first line. So whenever you shoot an enemy 150 meters, 250 meters, 350 meters, it doesn't matter. As long as your scope is zeroed correctly, line up the head with the first horizontal line and squeeze the trigger. Then finally, if we look at the 75 meter shots above scope adjustment, we can see if we line up the enemy's head in the middle between the first two lines on the scope, that's exactly where the bullet will land. So now, whether it be 175, 275 or 375 meters, just line up the enemy's head between the first two horizontal lines and pull the trigger. Now we have worked out the bullet drop compensation for the Springfield rifle. Remember, these results are specific to the Springfield rifle. This testing will have to be done again for each different rifle you intend to use. But for now, we should have no trouble at all hitting our targets. So let's go test what we have learned on a few unsuspecting enemies. It even applies to targets over 500 meters. Really quickly, I just want to talk about another option which is also worth thinking about, which is setting the scope adjustment slightly higher than the distance of the target. This will result in you having to aim below your target instead of above it, and can be useful if the range of the target is closer to the next scope adjustment level. So in this example, the enemy is 385 meters away. So I set my scope adjustment to 400 meters so I don't have to compensate as much. In this comparison, you can see the difference in the compensation required. Now this isn't something that I do personally, but I do think it's worth mentioning. One more thing worth mentioning is if using suppressed ammo, it will change the amount of compensation required. So if you'd like to use suppressed ammo, it'd be a good idea to do these same tests again, but only using suppressed ammo. That way you'll have two versions of your gun's bullet drop compensation, one for regular ammo and one for suppressed. Now, if you combine the information you've learned about bullet drop in this video with the information you've learned about wind from my previous Improve Your Rain Part 1 video, you should now be able to turn off that aim assist and take out Nazis with lethal accuracy. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope I've been able to help you guys learn to shoot without that aim assist, because I truly believe the game is far more enjoyable and best played without it. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, it really does help my channel to grow. This is a dedicated Sniper Elite channel, so hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date on all things Sniper Elite, and I will see you guys in the next video!
brutal barracuda, a sniper elite channel.